for me as a Gnostic, a space Gnostic, um, which means direct knowing, somebody who um, cultivates a direct relationship with the divine. Um, Gnosis is what I practice to do that, to, to get some of this wisdom, this direct connection with God, this relationship. You know, it's really not about the guitar. It's not about the guitar or music necessarily for me. It's about the experience. It's about the wisdom, the thought, the meditation, the prayer in the form, the communing with God. Because, you know, for thousands and thousands of years, people have turned to music, singing, playing instruments, rhythmic motion, dance, um, as a way to express themselves spiritually, as a way to get closer to God, um, as a way to share information with other people, too. Um, and certainly, I think in modern times, we kind of have stepped away from that. But in a spiritual context, when I listen to music these days, I definitely find there's a lot of hidden spiritual messages in a lot of popular music that maybe most people don't think about. You know, I think people think about chants and, you know, kind of spiritual music as being almost a thing of the past, right? But I don't think it is, and I think maybe it should come back. And for me, as a Gnostic, a space Gnostic, um, which means direct knowing, somebody who um, cultivates a direct relationship with the divine, um, Gnosis is what I practice to do that, to, to get some of this wisdom, this direct connection with God, this relationship. And I find that music, especially the rhythmic motion occupying my um, subconscious mind and body, my nervous system helps me connect and get some really profound insights, at least internally to me, while I'm playing these songs. Um, and sometimes they turn out to be pretty, pretty good songs, some bangers, I think, if you look at some of the stuff I put out. So with that in mind, that's what we're doing and what we're trying to find here is some wisdom. All right, we're just going to play with no expectations, no words written down and sing what comes to mind and maybe commune with God or the universe or just my own bad self. So let's see what we can do here. We're having a wonderful day. I'm standing here on the side of the infinite sea of your so divine self. One thing I've been trying to do is to focus a little bit more on the guitar aspect. And again, it's not the most important thing, um, but I definitely think it can take away from the overall message. So it is difficult, you know, to try to um, focus on more than one thing at once while doing this, which I think that's actually a helpful part of it, but it doesn't mean it's not difficult to do. It's just um, helpful to the overall goal of occupying your brain in the proper ways to let the things unlock to get that wisdom, that connection that, that I seek, you know, on, on any given day. Uh, to increase it, rather. I think I always have it, but to increase that level of connection and wisdom um, to all things. I walked through the forest, I walked many miles, I walked past all your yard doors. Say the campo all the way off. I feel it. I feel something coming here. Um, sometimes I can kind of go into like a little trance, and it's almost like a story plays out in my mind, in kind of a vision, almost like in my spiritual eyes, my mind's eye, my third eye. You know, it is imagery, um, as well as the understanding that comes with the words, and then. I try to turn that understanding in real time into words, into a song that's coherent and maybe even rhymes, right? Um, so why don't we try to, to get into that? I feel pretty well uh, confident that I'm going to be getting into some of that right now. I liked it better. I, I keep changing it, but I keep like going back to I liked it better. So what I'm going to do is just start strumming, strumming, strumming. Meanwhile, my, um, I guess, kind of third eye is spinning up, well, so to speak. It's kind of stabilizing. Spirit walk is landing where it's going to go, and we're going to go through and, and uh, figure something out, maybe something profound. I'm walking through a 
dense forest It seems to be Older than me Flowers and the trees Locked in time Birth and death Seed to sprout To tree To death To rot To fung Yes These things are not frozen in time But I see it so divine I see all of time All at once In this place I'm standing in In this forest that's Older than me, but is it really? Cause I can see its whole life I can see its ancestry And I can see its children I can see it, I can see it I can see the men coming and cutting them down early I can see this forest turn into a field I can see it grow back again again and while I see some fire burning through me, I mean through the forest, where do I end and where does this forest begin? Oh, I am the flame, you tried to burn me, but I am the flame in her holy name, I burn the violet flame, in the Lord's name I burn, you can burn the trees, but we'll come back again. trees for trying to hurt me even though you didn't succeed I think you'd still the bee he's knees by the way could you stop hurting all the bees I need heat them in their knees you tried to burn me down but look around you you need what I make to even breathe you need what I make off your head, you need the shade of my leaves, you need the fruit that I bear, and all I need from you is for you to breathe, and then to spread my seeds from that fruit you stole from me, maybe once in a while, when it is my time, I'll give you my flesh to build a nice, nice home, I'm the giving tree, I give you everything you want, and everything you need, but the problem of course. and this isn't uncommon going into these kind of gnosis songs um i thought it was going to go a completely different direction um because you know i have this kind of thing rattling around about like more about the ocean that i thought it was going to go to um but it didn't <laughs> you know it uh and then just to kind of describe the visual experience that i got while performing that or not even performing creating that from scratch is being outside of time like at the beginning of the song at first, it almost seemed like the forest was frozen in time. But then I came to realize that it wasn't frozen in time. I was seeing all of time all at once in this particular spot that I was in, in this kind of spirit walk, this vision that I was having. And uh, seeing all of time all at once, the, the life and death cycle of the trees and the land and everything changing, right? Uh, and 
understanding that it's, it's absolutely beautiful, right? S seeing that is absolutely beautiful. And uh, it's not just seeing, it also came with these really profound kind of understandings, profound to me at least, maybe not to you because you didn't share in them with me directly, um, just about time and, and life cycles and birth and death and destruction, which honestly is something I've been getting a lot of messages about, um, just kind of the cyclical nature, the cyclical nature of things, the cycle, the life, death. Um, and then moving on from there, it also talked about the resilience of Earth, Gaia, another name for Earth, right? Um, that you can burn that forest down, you can chop it down, but eventually it will come back, right? It will come back. Uh, you know, forest fires run through and it's actually good for the health of the forest, right? It's good for the soil. Um, there's, I think, blueberries, uh, certain kinds of berries and stuff, you know, stuff that we love as people um, only grow wild um, after a forest fire, you know. Um, but then also it touches on the themes of like greed in the human psyche um, and how the earth truly, every single thing we've ever had, everything we want, everything we need is given to us or taken by us from the earth and we just destroy it. And we don't have good long-term thinking about things. The earth provides everything we want and need. And it even makes a lot of room for our greed. Hey, that kind of rhymed too. Um, but we, the thing about greed is you keep pushing it further and further and further and further. And, um, you know, the earth is very forgiving, I think. But um, we're already past the point where we've done too much damage. Those that came before me did too much damage um, for things to be the same as they are, right? Things will continue to change. And in a lot of perspectives, they may get worse, but we're still here, okay? Um, they can try to hurt us. They can try to chop us down, right? But that forest will come back, okay? Strong as ever. Um, so it's definitely a message about resilience in there too. And I really appreciate that. Um, I really appreciate that. And that kind of is a common theme of a lot of these is not necessarily that like nothing bad's ever going to happen or that it's, it's not as simple as you're going to be okay, but it kind of is everything's going to be okay. That kind of comforting nature from God, but in a way that is real, you know, it, it, it comes with this explaining, this understanding of like these cycles and, you know, all things have their time, life, death, but that also time isn't real and that it is possible to open your mind in this life and get a taste of the true realism of existing outside of time which involves having all of time in front of you at once and i think in these little windows or glimpses into my true higher self is what i believe is doing that that higher self of me connected to part of god um, just as my physical body is and your physical body is and this guitar and everything else. Um, but it's just a higher level of oneself than we spend most of our lives thinking about. And that's a functional thing. You know, it, it's a required aspect of this life we're living. You know, if your life is a painting that's being observed and loved and appreciated and created by God, um, that's the painting. You know, that is the the borders that's the frame around the painting because it's an infinite experience that God has and the universe has right of itself. And part of that infinity is looking at each part, you know, and, and experiencing what that is. And that's your life, you know, and it's a subdivide the, the vision of infinity, meaning that your higher soul, uh, the thing that when you have a thought, who hears it, the answer to that question, the thing that hears it, the thing that's in you, but not physically as much you, your soul, whatever you want to call it, your higher self, your feeling center, your intuition, that thing is itself infinite. And also, physically, we are all infinite, just not in our current arrangement, you know? Um, I think that's beautiful. I think that um, all of that spiel and, and more, I'm just trying my very, very best <laughs> to explain very metaphysical concepts, you know, these kind of spirit walk, vision-y aspects of a song you just heard, you know, because most of the time, all people get from me is the song, you know, but there's so much more to it than that. And it's, maybe it's a fantasy, maybe it's a dream, but 
it would be wonderful to me if I could help even one person practice what I've just uncovered my ability to do because I would believe every single person is capable of gnosis, that direct knowing and relationship with the divine, the everything, the all-knowing, the alpha, the omega. I call her Sophia, and I think of her as the Holy Spirit, which is part of the infinite God, the Father, and Christ, and all those things. Um, but that's the part that's with me. And, you know, almost like an imaginary friend, but not at that level, right? Um, I don't physically see anything that's not there either, by the way. I, this we're talking about, I have a very active uh, mind's eye and spiritual eye. Um, and I, it's vivid, you know, it's very vivid all the time. So, uh, and ears, ears to, ears to hear, eyes to see, um, skin to feel, whatever, you know, um, it's very real to me, but it's on a different level than the reality that we spend most of our time talking about, you know? Um, and that's what spirituality is for a lot of people, I think. So it's not very unusual, but I think what is unusual is just some of the technique um, that I've just fallen into, just felt pulled and guided to, and what works for me. And I want that to be very clear, um, because you, I think everyone is capable, you included, of gnosis and getting wisdom and this kind of experience that I've had from God and having that ongoing relationship every day, 24-7, right? Uh, that level of paying attention to it peaks and, and valleys, you know, but it's always present once you have it. Um, and it probably is always present even before you realize it too, but it's very apparent once you have it. Um, that kind of spiritual awakening, right? Um, that, that I went through and many other people go through. Um, once that happens, um, I think you really start to change the way you think about things. And for me, the way I think about things like the concept of self, myself, what I am has changed over the last year. I see myself as my higher true self, right? Like my concept of whom I am, Luke. But beyond even my name, I think Luke is more attached to the body and 50 to 80 years if I'm lucky that I get right now, you know? But I think that I am at one level more than that. And I see myself as that. And that, I think, is an important realization, too, to even to begin to, to try to seek out more. You look inwards and you find that. You find what you really are. And in my experience, at least, you can't help but love what you really are. Whenever you have negative self-talk or uh, those things you hate about yourself or beating yourself up uh, internally, you know, that isn't possible with your true higher self that you can find inside. It's not possible. It won't even come to mind to do. It, does, it wouldn't make sense. Um, what those are, those kind of thoughts, are distortions arising from your physical body and the machine that your physical body is to help you survive and to live in this kind of grounded reality, we'll call it, which, you know, kind of in a dualistic way, um, there's more than one level than just that grounded thing that we're kind of stuck in right now. And it's stuck has a negative connotation. I love this. You love this too. Your higher self, trust me on this, okay? Your higher self loves this grounded reality because it loves everything, all right? Even the worst possible lives that people have lived and then died, um, they wanted that. They've seen all of time they wanted to experience it, you know? Um, and it's all happening all at once, forever. But from that higher perspective, it's contained. It's in a container, right? It, it's an inf infinite amount of time and space, but you're bigger than that. So you can see it all in a container, basically. It's, think of other dimensions, you know, up, down, left, right, forward, back. Invent some new directions that you can't really conceptualize unless you open your mind. Um, it's kind of like that, okay? Um, past, future as another axis. Um, and then the other ones, you know, continue. You can keep adding accesses, accesses to dimensionality, okay? And again, up, down, left, right, forward, back, past, future, you know. We don't have words. You keep going higher up. Um, but that's the level I'm talking about of existence, you know? Um, 
And so we're kind of going on a tangent now, but I think that's all a really important background information for what we've done here, okay? Um, through that knowledge, it, it gives me an ability to explore the wisdom of the universe beyond my two feet and where I'm grounded at right now. And keep in mind, I'm not insane or crazy or particularly manic either. You know, I am grounded in this reality, but dualistically also being more than the sum of my physical parts, I think. And maybe that's a choice. Maybe it's just the truth and I'm choosing to see the truth. You can decide that. Um, but what I want to encourage everyone to do is as takeaways, the occupying of your central nervous system is very important to Gnosis. Look up remote viewing and like the CIA experiments and that stuff that's come out recently. Shane Dawson did a video about it that I saw. Uh, I mean, it's Shane Dawson to take it with a grain of salt, but um, they were using that technique, the kind of uh, remote viewing people. Their technique is to just scribble on paper, which if you think about it, it's similar to this. I would say this is taken to another level than that remote viewing, right? This is taking it, so I'm playing the guitar, which is taking two hands, okay? I'm singing, which takes some mental energy. I'm making the words up as I go. I'm having the third eye vision and having understanding and thoughts and everything else on top of that, right? My physical brain is about as maxed out as it could be and still be functional to do all those things, okay? And when I reach that point, it lets me go beyond, you know, it lets that other part um, not be so drowned out by the noise of the rest of it in a way, you know, that intuition, that feeling center. Okay. For me, it feels to be like physically in the back of my head, almost like an eyeball looking forward through my mind. You know what I mean? Um, that's what it physically feels like. It feels like there and my heart and of course, like all your chakras and my spine and, um, you know, when I think about like the violet flame, which is a whole nother concept, look up the violet flame, St. Germain, if you want more information. Um, I am the violet flame. I am. And um, look up that information and I, you can be too. We all are. And I'll share my, share in my flame. It will not diminish and together we'll burn brighter together is a mantra that I was given from who I call Sophia, the Holy Spirit. And it's true. You know, it, it, it is very empowering to feel that. Um, one book I'd recommend you to read on some of this and keep in mind, there are many, many levels of truth because like I said, these different accesses of reality, accesses, these different dimensions of reality, right? And the infinite nature of it, more than one thing is true and contradictory things are very often true in a spiritual context. Um, the universe is a contradiction. An infinity mathematically is zero. Make a number line, zero, one, two, three, Negative one, two, three. That's an infinite series on number line. Add all those up. You get goose egg. You get zero. You know, that's a contradiction because obviously um, infinity is something. It's everything. But also mathematically, it's nothing. And that is the universe. Okay. Matter, antimatter, up, down, left, right, forward, back, past, future. You know, it's uh, these opposites, these contradictions somehow creating coming together to make all we know and we exist in the margins of that truth i think basically this particular reality and also if you want a little sneak peek of some other wisdom i've got and a lot of it is available to you on the different platforms and stuff i try to record these things when i do these sessions because it's important to me spiritually to share um is that you need to understand that one from that higher level that i was speaking about that higher self you are infinite being it's not just these 50 or 80 years you reincarnation right um it's also kind of a growing process throughout these iterations of life set of lives that you have that higher self is learning growing experiencing right because even though it's an infinite self it can still grow you can take an infinity and add one you know um so understand that um 
And understand that too, where you find people like your Adolf Hitlers or whatever, because I'm a, a Unitarian Universalist. And one thing, and that's just a couple of my many spiritual labels that I've acquired in the last year. But what that means is that we believe all souls eventually are saved, reunified, whatever you want with God, even Adolf Hitlers of the world. Um, I look at somebody like Adolf Hitler as a very young iteration, okay? And I have asked the question in these kind of sessions, or I have a, um, not exactly, like I'm cool with it, but it is an uncertainty, uh, an unknown in far being able to explain it. Is every person the same person, the same soul doing this? Or are they different? Are there some pe are there some souls? You know, with reincarnation, the math kind of gets a little fuzzy if you think about it, right? Um, but the answer is, the best I can describe it is yes and no. Separate but joined, right? Um, think of the Holy Trinity, okay? Now change it into the Holy Quadrillion Billion, you know, basically. Um, that is the universe, okay? And beyond. Universe is a crappy word, by the way, because what we use it as isn't one, uni. It's not the singular verse that there is. It's Multiverse is probably a better word. But that has a lot of different meanings, too. We can't agree. Language is terrible for spirituality. Um, the best form of language for spirituality seems to be music. Because music, what does it do? It, In addition to pure information, it allows you to convey emotions pretty effectively. right? Um, but so, occupy your central nervous system. However you want to do it. Guitar something else. I think music is helpful. Like I said, with the remote viewing, they're scribbling on paper, whatever works for you, maybe try different things. Um, candles are helpful. Don't ask me why. That's a whole nother discussion. I'll go down another tangent. Incense, all that kind of stuff is good um, to get you in the, in the mindset of it. Um, and also follow your heart. When, when your heart tells you it's time to sit down, and for me, it just tells me sit down, turn on the camera, pick up the guitar, and see what happens. And that's how this video came to be. Okay. I was honestly came in here to plug something into a charger and here we are, you know, um, and I feel good about it. I feel really good and blessed and happy that I got a little bit more wisdom out of this. And it, honestly, it's just really it's just enjoyable, you know, to sit here and strum a guitar. I enjoy it, um, beyond anything else. Right. Um, so occupy your nervous system, listen to your inner self. Don't overthink it. You want to let it flow, okay? You're kind of, for me at least, you're, you're describing the things that you're experiencing, okay? And I find that the rhyming almost is subconscious, right, at that point. It's almost like somebody else is speaking through my mouth at that point. Like, my experience, the guitar, and this, this is secondary during that. I am not here. Like, it's a struggle for me to make sure my eyes stay open. You know, because I want to close them. I want to be in dreamland while I'm doing that almost, you know. Um, but I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope maybe you've learned something. Guys, I am obsessed with the divine and spirituality and these things. I take classes on it. Uh, I'd like to, you know, maybe somehow work this into more of a profession. You know, I don't know. I just, I want stuff like this to be a big part of my life. And it is with my church, my Unitarian Universalist Church. And and my community on here, but I just want it to be bigger. You know, spiritual growth is always going to be one of my goals. That's one of the principles of being a UU, right? Which I highly recommend. Check out UUA.org. That's the Unitarian Universalist Association's website. Um, it's not like any church or religious organization you've ever experienced. And what I like is that, well, one, it's very active in community making communities better and actually helping people regardless of their background or faith helping the people right doing kindness and love doing the things that god wants us to do um right without dogma i'm not a fan of dogma you know as an, a a person who does gnosis books are cool i have plenty of books i could certainly get like gnosis inspired from books you know but for me they're never a book can never be the authority on God. God is the ultimate authority on God and God is within you and me. Okay. I think that I can find a lot of wisdom in the Bible. You know, God, Sophia guiding me, 
in my reading um, the Bible and other books too, and from listening to other people. But ultimately, the authority spiritually is in here. Um, at the back, like I said, that back of the head part, not the front of the head part that causes the distortions, the survival brain, you know, um, the the part that's all love and wisdom all the time within all of us. It's there. I, I promise you it's there if you look inwards hard enough. And honestly, with the way the outwards is, is looking these days, the outer the outer parts of the world, you know, the, the world at large, maybe it is time to look inwards, people. Maybe, maybe now is the time for that. Um, so I love you all so much. I love my life so much. You know, I, I love God so much. I love music. I, I love my pet. I love everything, you know. And I hope that you can find some love in your life today. I hope you can find some wisdom in your life today. And, you know, whatever name you choose to call your God or your spirit or your divine, uh, or if you even look at it that way or not. What I believe is that most things are kind of true in that aspect, right? So um, as long as it's based in love, um, start there. Start there and um, share it. Share what you find out. The world needs more of that. So much love. Stay safe. Stay wise. Stay loved. Stay loving. And I'll see you soon.